Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. At the beginning of FIFA 22, everybody is opening packs, but everybody has the same question. Should I keep these players or should I sell them? And what I want to do today is take a look at some early game FIFA 22 market tips to help you figure out which players you should keep because they're going to rise later and which players you should sell because they're going to be the most expensive right in the beginning of the game. We're going to be taking a look at a lot of graphs from last year in FIFA 21, but also thinking about how the beginning of the game works. Of course, with the new features in this year's FIFA 22 with the preview packs with no more division rivals coins bonus like we had last year, but the 4,600 FIFA points being opened by a lot of people with the ultimate edition. There's tons to consider here. We're going to try to break it down today. Again, the biggest thing, though, is that this year in FIFA 22, preview packs. Every single day, you're going to be able to preview a 7.5K pack during the beginning of FIFA. And that means with preview packs, like we've already seen in FIFA 21, they bring the biggest amount of supply that we have ever seen. So that makes me a little bit worried for some of our lower tier cards that are still very meta as we look at some examples here in just a second at how their prices will rise, but actually I think the rises will be quicker and the drop-offs will be bigger than we've ever seen before, and that's gonna happen throughout this game of FIFA 22. But let's get into it because I'm gonna start talking about some players that you should sell. So again, what we are doing right now is taking a look at players that you should sell if you pack them within the first two to three to four days, and I'm gonna tell you why. First things first, lower rated cards. I'm talking 81s, 82s, and below. Some 81s and 82s could still rise. Some low rated cards could still rise, but 90% of these cards are their most expensive in the first two weeks of the game. These low rated gold cards that everybody starts off with in their starter teams and then sells afterwards. Take a look at Vinicius in FIFA 21. I'm going to go all the way back here to October of FIFA 20 and show you how his price went down big time. He started off at his most expensive point in the first three to four days of the game, dropped off big time. Two weeks later, he goes from 20,000 coins to 8,000 coins. That would be a card that if you pack in the first couple days of the game, I would sell. Now, if we're being very, very, very picky about this, the first day or so, a lot of the cards that you pack are going to be very cheap. Footbin was not working. These graphs were not registering last year for the first two days of the web app and the first day of EA Play. So you don't see a lot of prices in here. Vinicius was probably 10,000 coins or below on the day one. He rose up to 20K and then he went down. So for a lot of these cards, when I'm mentioning selling them, that sell time for a lot of these cards is going to be three to four days after the initial release of the game, basically Saturday, Sunday of this next week. After you get on the game, the 22nd, Saturday, Sunday, in my opinion, is gonna be your sell time for a lot of these cards. So other options, right? Jan Vertonghen, Pepe, a lot of these center backs and a lot of these cards that people are saying, hey, I'm gonna put this into my starter team. These guys might be five, 10, 15,000 coins, but they're never gonna stay at that, that price range for very long because you're gonna see a lot of these cards just like Vinicius have huge price drop-offs as they get supplied. And that's what I'm saying with the preview packs, they're gonna get supplied even faster and even more than we've seen in the past. So that's why I think you should sell off in that time frame. Now also what I wanna do today is show you and, and talk about why are we selling in that first weekend. We're selling in that first weekend. Look, here's Klosterman as well. He was extinct, that's a bit of an anomaly there. Richarlison is another one, right? Last year, 81 rated card, one of the most favored starter squad strikers from the Prem. The reason why we're selling in that first weekend is because on Tuesday, whatever date is, is it Tuesday the 27th? No, it's not a Tuesday, it is a Monday, the 27th, of September, Monday, when the 4,600 FIFA points come out to Ultimate Edition users, you are going to see a solid drop off on a lot of the low tier market because there's gonna be a ton of packs that'll be opened on that day with so many people coming onto the game for the first time as well with the early access for pre-order of the Ultimate Edition. So even more 
I guess, emphasis on these lower tier cards, I would sell them in that early time frame. Let's talk about some more. Tamori, right? Popular FIFA 22 cards that are probably going to be expensive in the first week or so. This Tamori card, people want to link him with Kessie and Teo Hernandez. This would be a card that I would sell in the first week or so of the game. Ben Godfrey, a non-rare, I would sell this card as well in the first week or two of the game because people are going to work past these cards. They're going to work past Ben Godfrey. They're going to upgrade to somebody like a Varane down the line or like um, that might be too big of an upgrade, but maybe they upgrade from Ben Godfrey to somebody like Militao, maybe somebody like Marquinhos. Then they go get a Varane or a Van Dyke when they have more and more coins. People... People get rid of their starter teams really quick. You're going to learn that. And as we see from a lot of these graphs, like Richarlison, he went to 50K and then boom, two weeks later, he's 18,000 coins, right? With Vinicius, he was 20K, went all the way down to 8,000 coins. So for a lot of these starter team players, I would be getting them out in that first weekend. Now, if you pack Ben Godfrey day one and he's going for 3,000 coins, I would not sell. I would wait because I think he would still go up to about 10K. But then during that weekend time frame, that's when I'll be looking to sell. Now, obviously, when you're opening your beginning of the game packs, you have to sell something to have some coins. You can't hold on to everything if it's day one and you packed, uh, you know, Mbappe and, and you packed some cards that are like, man, these are going to go on my team. I don't want to sell these just yet. You got to sell something, right? There's going to be a plenty of cards that you pack SBC fodder and cards that are not going to go into your starting 11 or cards that you would need for SBCs. Like I'm talking non-rares that are Brazilian, good for the advanced SBCs, that sort of stuff. I would sell. So like I have this example of Sebastian Holler. If I pack this card, I'd be selling it. He might only sell for 750 coins. Just sell it, right? Take the coins. Busquets, an 86 rated card. You might have to sell this guy for 5K. Just do it, right? Because it's 5,000 coins that you can use to trade and to actually have some coins to upgrade your team as well. Because if you don't sell anything, then you're not going to have any coins to do anything with. So that's why I would be selling the Busquets card. That's why I'd be selling some of these cards that you know you're not going to use right away in your team. Get them out. Take the coins because coins are precious and coins are what you need to do anything in this game. That's why we're even making this video because coins are so big and precious we have to talk about it. So those are some of the cards that I would sell, right? Your fodder cards, stuff that you're not going to use. Now let's move on to some higher rated stuff. Marcus Llorente. This is where it gets a little bit more tricky. The trickiest parts to whether you should keep or whether you should sell depend on cards that are like Renato Sanchez. Cards like this for Charleston, right? Or, you know, not maybe Richarlison, but cards like a, a Rashford, who, yes, he was very meta last year and rose up a ton in price. But those cards that are like 82 to 83 to 84 rated, that are like, hmm, are these cards actually going to be really good in the game this year? Or are they just okay and people they're going to get bypassed? Well, this Llorente card last year, of course, had a pretty crazy pr price fluctuation. This guy this year, he's going to be a bit more expensive and he's going to be very, very popular. This would be a card that if you packed him in the first day or two of FIFA 22, I would hold because he might be going for 50K then. He's probably going to be going for 100K later. A lot of these higher tier, higher rated cards are going to be holds because they're going to go up over the course of a few days like this Rashford did last year. Of course, he had a, a very large rise later on, about a month after, because the five-star skills became so overpowered. But Rashford was like 140,000 coins here. He was probably 100K over in here, rose up all the way to 180, right? 180,000 coins, and then kept going all the way to 290 at his peak. But why would you sell this card on, on a Friday, October 2nd for 140K if you knew that he was going to go up to 186K if he was high rated, very popular, and very meta, right? You think about PSG players. When you think of meta, like what cards are meta, what cards are not meta, just look through these lists and, and figure out what cards people are using in their teams. You, you guys know what the meta is, right? You know, pace is very um, a very meta characteristic of this game. Good links also is about this. And Golo Conte would be a card I would 100% hold on to. Take a look at what he did last year. If you pack Conte this year, day one or day two, you better be holding. With all the 
French links this year, like with Varane being in the Premier League, people need those links, right? And especially with the League One and some of the foot heroes being French like Ginola, this is a card I would 100% hold. He got an upgrade this year as well. He's probably going to be over 400,000 coins at some point this year. If you pack him day one or two and he's 250k, you're definitely holding for the first couple weeks. Just put him in your team, use him, and have some fun. That's the great thing about this. If you pack a great card that you don't want to sell right away because you know it's going to go up in price, just put it in your team if it fits, use the card, and have fun with it. So again, that's kind of the gist. Let's look through a few more of these cards. This Marcus Urente, again, that'd be a hold from me. Marcus Rashford would again be a hold with the Cristiano Ronaldo links. Bruno Fernandes would be another card that I would say hold big time because so many people are going to be going after Cristiano Ronaldo this year. Marquinhos would be a hold as well. I think this is going to be one of the most OP and most used center backs in the game, even though he doesn't have as much pace as others. His defending stat and his links are just incredible. So those would be all cards that I would say hold on to. Now, some other things that I would say to watch out for. Just like we mentioned, uh, some cards get ones to watches, right? With Ronaldo, these cards that get ones to watches, their golds will be in packs until October 1st at least. Those would be holds for me as well because if you pack them early on, a guy like this Hakimi might be going for like 20, 30,000 coins, maybe a little bit more. But as people know, his price is going to go up because he's going to be going out of packs. Still a very popular card. People are going to invest in him. That's why I would call a card like this or a card that is already guaranteed to be in ones to watch a hold. Maybe Wijnaldum as well. Of course, he's got an 84 rated item that is a great link up player uh, for squad building with PSG links, which of course the PSG links this year are going to be king. Um, with all of the players that they have there. So that would be a hold for me as well. And icons, if you pack an icon, if you're lucky enough to get an incredible icon pack pull at the beginning of FIFA 22, I would hold onto that card 100%. But let's talk a little bit more market, right? Because I want to talk about these graphs. And, and just, again, if you kind of get your head wrapped around how the market's going to work in the first couple of days, then that'll help you make decisions in real time after we've talked all about this stuff as well. So again, 22nd of September is going to be the date when everybody gets on. Prices are gonna be cheap day one. Uh, they're not gonna be as cheap as last year because we're gonna have EA play on the same day. People are gonna start opening packs and prices are gonna start to go up in that first day. You're gonna see prices move up really large amounts, big rises on some cards, and you're gonna see some cards um, you know, just kind of be really, really cheap as well. Like some of those SPC fodder cards, like a Busquets, who really nobody is going to want to use. He's going to be really cheap. Is it worth an investment? I don't think so. But people are going to start building their starter teams, depending on how many coins they have. They're going to start investing in players as well. And you're going to see a nice rise into the first couple of days. What I do think you're going to see, though, is a lot of people are going to know about the 4,600 FIFA points and remember how last year, on that Tuesday, October 6th, that's when, like, that was, you can see this point here, October 6th, he went down from Monday into Tuesday, but he kept going down after that. A lot of people know that with early access and with the start of the game, a lot of those lower tier cards, lower rated cards, cards like Tamori, cards like Vertonghen, cards like the Ben Godfrey or Klosterman or Lacroix, who were expecting, you know, to get in real ratings for confirmed very soon, but we've seen leaked ratings and they're insane. You're going to see massive price drop offs just because of that supply. And especially this year with the 4,600 FIFA points and the preview packs, there's just going to be so much supply. And that's why Again, I think that first couple days, it's, it was a peak last year for a lot of cards. Hyunmin Sun is a perfect example because a lot of people thought he was going to be so overpowered last year in FIFA. He got bought up to 360K and look, he never ever went back up. He went down to 260, rebounded almost to 300, but never saw those numbers again because number one, he was over-invested in because people thought he was going to be the best left mid in the Premier League and the most used. But what happened was instead of the weak foot being overpowered, skill moves were overpowered. And that is why Marcus Rashford went from 160K all the way up to 300 because of the meta. So whatever the meta is in game FIFA 22, it's not going to be figured out right away, but that plays into things as well. 
I just want to make that big point because I think that that first couple of days again this year could be a huge, huge place where we actually want to sell some cards, sell a lot of cards before we head into the first couple of days of the um, early access time frame with new SPCs and objectives that will be coming out for the uh, ones to watch promo on the first. So that's just kind of my take. I think there's going to be a nice bubble, a nice, uh, you know, we're going to reach the peak of a lot of prices for a lot of cards in that first weekend. I really think that's going to be the way it is again. And you're going to have some people that know that from last year and they're going to start selling and you might see some drop offs a little bit earlier. But I really think that you're still going to see a nice rise from the first two to three days into the weekend and then a sell off after that. And again, I really do think that the sell offs are going to be even more extreme this year because with more supply, what that means is when people decide that a card isn't what they want to use anymore and they all go and sell it, the price drop offs are going to be nuts. It's going to be crazy since there's a lot more cards out there on the market. And when the demand stops holding that card at a certain price point, it's just going to get dumped and it's going to go down a ton. So I hope that helps answer the question about how this early market's going to look. What cards could you keep? What cards could you sell? Just make sure you sell enough cards on that day one. If you're opening packs day one, make sure you sell enough so that you have coins to do something with. If you only have 2,000 coins, you can't do much, right? Sell some cards. If you get some fodder, even if, even if you feel like, hey, I'm not going to be able to get, let's say you, you pack, let's say you pack this Tomori, right? And he's selling for 10,000 coins. You're like, man, tomorrow he might be 15K. But if you take your 10,000 coins and you start trading, you might be able to use that 10K to make more than the 15K you would have sold him for the next day. So think about that as well. A little bit of an opportunity cost scenario built into that as well. But that, in my opinion, is the way you should navigate the early days of the FIFA 22 market with when should you keep, when should you sell, when should you hold, all of that good stuff. If this video helped you out today, smash a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate the Foot Accountant. I will catch you guys later. Peace. Out.